Good evening, everyone. Tonight I'd like to play for you the notes of the Chopin Waltz in C-sharp minor, opus 64, number 2, as though I was playing it in a concert, but only slow motion, because I'm trying to instill in my body and in my mind and in my heart the, the, the phrases, the intention of each phrase, and stay within the regimen of the count, but not sound one, two, three, one, two, three, but thinking of a, of a waltz conducted and not bumping out beat one because that's already written into the music. So I want to just listen to the, my voice, my internal singing voice of how I would sing a note like da-yum. I'm not going to go da-yum. And, and I don't want to jerk into it. I want to come smoothly into it. I, I want to da-yum. So I got to think of the air passing through my heart and through my voice and into the next. It can be a crescendo on a single note in my mind. It can't be from the piano because once the sound has happened, it's happened. But if you think of the violin bow, the rosin on the horsehair drawing on that wire, you can give the weight more intention, more, more, more body weight, arm weight, as it's going up to the next note and then be more gentle on the second note. And if you have the finger acting like that bow when it comes in, like sinking th right through to the floor, diving right th down through to the ground, and then drawing like the violin during the length of that sound over to the next, you'll be linking it and because the wrist is limpid then. It's movable up and down. And if you can get it to sound vocal, it's going to be much more pleasant to the listener who's listening to you make the piano sing. That's what they're listening for in the hall. So I have to be out in the hall imagining the balance of the voices and imagining the voice of the singing line having something to express. So uh, those are my thoughts anyway when I'm trying to do it slow to try and get it into the piece. So we give it a try anyway. Maybe I'll put some glasses on and see what I'm doing. I've got the memory on this piece but it's just to watch it and be sure that I don't have any wrong notes because um, I'm always trying to reinforce what the composer intended. So, and here I go out with the finger flat and draw. So, and while I'm singing that, spots where it's weak because it's the weak part of the hand and it needs individual finger practice on those spots. So I'll have to do them heavy on each note but legato because it's just a weight on the key balance. It's like when you hold the bow of a violin. The bow rests on your thumb so you don't have to grip the bow and be tight on it. You just have to let it balance on there. So I just have to let the weight balance on each of these keys so I can right in there you have that's where it's weak see it's penissimo here so I gotta hear yeah, yeah, yeah. That's bad. It's the left has to come in dead together with the right. Right there. And I play that over and over and over till I get yeah. And 
So in other words, I've got to be dead together with the B sharp. It's more enjoyable to practice when you're listening for the details and getting it right. The balance of the hands, the singing line, not punching out any notes. So this, I can, I can think of a lasso, <laughs> like fishing. Throw the arm up, out, over, and allow, because there's a wind underneath it, takes it, allows it to settle, and you, you're the violin bow drawing toward you with the rosin on the horse hair, and the horse hair is turned tight enough that it's, a, it's the firmness in your thumb as you draw, so D. And while you're on that note, be singing the, the crescendo, that D, I, D, not at the start, but to, during it, I, uh, Should be more on the third beat one. That's got to come to dead together. try it where I'm just focusing on the pedaling because I'm not holding it down the full length that I need to for what Chopin has written in each bar and uh, partly I'm doing that because I want to hear the clarity that I'm dead together when the hands play together as part of my practice but I need to be able to pull it all together and do the correct pedaling and do the shaping of the phrases and have every beat with the two hands play together coming exactly dead on together. So anyway, I just thought I'd try sh show you how I'm trying to deal with it. Um, then I can practice it with a metronome and all this kind of stuff as well to be certain that I'm not playing around with the tempo when I shouldn't be. It has to be clean and accurate, and then it has to be musical and expressive. So there's a huge gamut in all of that with everything that you've got to play with and it's to clean up all of the act and make it all work to pull it together as a composition that it's the way I want it to present it every time I play it. So I just thought I'd throw that out at you to show you what I find I need to do in working up a piece to get it up to a performance level. Anyway, I hope you have a good night. Thank you. Bye-bye.